Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you a binary counter which doesn't make use of piston logic. Now, most binary counters you've probably seen have all been based on pistons, and that's great. But the thing with pistons is, they're easy to screw up. It's easy to get a piston to bud, or drop a block, or do any other variety of behaviors that you really don't want it to do. And that can be bad especially when you start using something like a binary counter for more advanced purposes, like a program counter, where you absolutely need it to do exactly what you want every time, even under some relatively extreme circumstances. And that's why you might be interested in building a pistonless version, such as this one. This version, it's pretty small, it's not much bigger than most piston-based counters, and it's also pretty much the same speed. You can count at a maximum speed of four ticks. So, it's pretty small, it's pretty fast, it doesn't have carry delay, and it's pretty cool. So, let's start going through how to build this thing. The heart and soul of this device is this repeater lock based T flip flop right here. And the way this works is if you send it a two tick on off on pulse, like this, then it toggles. And the way this works is just based on timing. One tick to unlock the repeater, one tick for either this signal to move in, or the current signal to move out, and then by the time it turns back on, it's locked the repeater again. So it's not a complex device by nature, but this whole thing is the secret to the device. Now, the way I'm actually going to use this to make a counter is I'm going to have a carry line right here. I'm not actually going to build it yet, but just for the time being, I'm going to say this is a carry line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output of this, and first off, send it to the output of the whole counter, and then second off, I'm going to send it back a bit. And I'm going to have it power the carry line. And of course, I'm going to have some glowstone logic in here to prevent it from going backwards. But what this is going to do is that it's going to stop the next bit from toggling, unless this bit is on. So, I could do something like this. I could have my next one staggered up a little bit, because these are three wide, so I can't place them directly next to each other. And then, here's my next bit, and I can just take power down like this, and there's my next output. And then, I could take the output of this, and power the carry the next carry line, which will be staggered down again, with the same thing. Well, not the same thing, but I can power it again. And that way, this one won't toggle unless this bit has turned on. So, so essentially, I'm just preventing it from carrying unless the bit is on. And as you'll see, once I actually get a carry line and I'm able to demonstrate this, this will enable the effect of a binary count, because it'll do this bit turns on, the next time it'll toggle this one again, and it'll toggle this one since this one was on. So it'll be go 0, 1, 1, 0, which is 0, 1, 2. Then this bit will toggle back on, so 3. Then it'll allow it to carry to the next one, so these will turn off, and that will turn on, 4. And it'll just keep going in that pattern, the pattern of binary counting. And that's the way this whole device works. So. Now, I'm going to take this and create the next one, which will fit snugly into right here, if I did everything correctly. So, now I can put the repeater there, put some wire there, and there. And it's essentially just going to tile like this, or stagger like this, for however many bits you want to have. And I'll just go ahead and leave it at this, since you get the idea by now, hopefully. And actually, before I do that, this staggers like this, and this sends power up. And that'll be the toggle of the final bit. So, there you go. Now, now that you hopefully understand how the actual counting mechanism works, I'm going to start talking about the carry line. So now I'm going to work on the carry line. 
And just to better demonstrate this, I went ahead and expanded this into 8 bits off screen using the exact same build process I showed you earlier. You can have as many or as few bits as you like. This is just for demonstration purposes. But anyways, here's the idea. I want the signal to be able to carry along this way, so travel this way, but not be able to travel backwards. In order to do this, I'm going to use glowstone logic. So, I'm going to have glowstone here. That way, this wire can travel up here, but this wire can't travel back down. And in order to make this reach the next bit, since it can't travel back down this way, I'm going to have this pass under here. So now this signal can travel under and reach this bit. And I'm going to use glowstone again so it doesn't travel back down. And I'm going to keep this block here so it doesn't travel back up. And I'm going to just continue this process all the way along. And you might have already seen the problem with this, you might not. But there is indeed a slight issue with this that prevents this from being complete in and of itself. And I'm, I'll let you ponder on that a moment since I'm almost done. You got it yet? Well, whoops. That's not what I intended to do. Um, there. That's better. If you haven't noticed, how would this bit travel to the next bit? In the current setup, it can't. So, in order to do that, I'm going to do this exact same process, except staggered this way. So, now, this bit can travel this way, using glowstone logic, and it can't travel back. So essentially, it's the same line again, except this time staggered. And this carry line was not my idea, this was created by proper English, but it's a very, very useful device, and I, I love it. So, yeah. And actually, I'll just go ahead and build it, just to show you. Why not? I have some time. So, and there. And you might be thinking that we might that we run into signal issues like this. And for the most part, you don't. The, this really only gets to be a little bit of an issue once you decide to go for 8 bits. Which is why I went ahead and made 8 bits off screen. So, now, once I connect all these, the issue is this. Oh! Okay. I guess I'll finish this video later. One moment. Okay, server's back up. And I'm going to change that to that just because that's bothering me. And now, back to what I was saying. There is a slight signal length issue. It doesn't quite reach the 8th bit in some places. So, in order to remedy this, I'm going to relocate the 8th bit slightly. At least this is my solution. To relocate the 8th bit, and relocate the 7th bit's... well, whatever you want to call it, wire. So, it's like this. And then I can just move this like this, and I can move this down, I suppose. And then, the whole thing is up and running. So, with all that out of the way, I should be able to go ahead and test. So, I'm going to build a repeater. I'll put it right here. And, what should I send into this? Okay. I'll just go ahead and test it at maximum speed, which is four ticks. So, there's two tick repeater there, one tick there, and one tick there. And that should be four ticks. So, apparently everyone wants to teleport to me because I'm making a video or something. I don't really know. But yeah, I'm going to have that go right there. And I'm just going to use a piston to set up the clock, because why not? It doesn't affect the logic. You can use any clock you want. And... With all that done, I should be alright to test this. So, if I hit run, it starts counting. And there you go. That is how you build a pistonless binary counter, using only some repeater locks and some interesting carry logic. 
It's not too big, it's only about the same size as most piston-based counters, and it can run at a maximum speed of 4 ticks using an on-off on pulse. And remember, the on-off on pulse has to be a 2 tick off pulse. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.